Okay, this video is what is the difference between pharmacology and food? Okay, pharmacology means several categories of drugs. Uh, some of the best ones are ones that replace something that the person is lacking. Like if you can't make insulin anymore um, from diabetes, let's say type 1 diabetes or type 2 insulin dependent, very valuable to be able to have insulin available as a medication that you could take. Same thing if you're deficient in thyroid hormone. Excuse me. Um, L-DOPA, if you got Parkinson's disease. So those are replacement drugs for something that we're missing, and they can be very good. Antibiotics. If you got a bacterial infection, you know, a bad bacterial infection, I've seen antibiotics save people's lives and really help them a lot. Um, you got to be careful not to overuse them for minor things where you don't need them because they can, you know, disrupt your gut flora, for example, cause leaky gut. Viral infections. Back when I was a resident, all the HIV patients died pretty fast and in a pretty miserable way. Nowadays, they live for decades. Um, hepatitis C patients used to not live much more than a decade or two, and nowadays they're living longer than that. Um, so again, the medications for these patients have been a tremendous benefit for them. However, the vast majority of medications are what you would call enzyme inhibitors or enzyme activators, you know, changing the normal function of enzymes, or they're, they do something similar to a receptor. You know, typical blockers would be beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, dopamine blockers, you know, your antipsychotic medications, other inhibitors, ACE inhibitors, serotonin selective reuptake inhibitors. Okay, well, the point I'm making is these are basically poisons, okay? You're poisoning an enzyme or receptor system in your body. And what I'm trying to say is, you know, hello, you cannot poison your way to optimal health. There are some times, well, maybe you would want to do that. But what I'm trying to say is I know tons of people and they think, well, my hypertension's under control because I'm taking these three medicines. Um, my bad diet is controlled by these two, three medicines I'm taking, you know, inhibiting their cholesterol metabolism or synthesis enzymes. And what I'm saying is you'll never have your optimal health from taking pills, okay? It's just not going to happen that you're going to inhibit your enzyme systems because in the vast majority of situations, you might block an enzyme or overactivate an enzyme within a pathway that you feel is causing your disease. But that same enzyme is present very often in multiple other locations, all the other cells or throughout the blood. And so you're going to have side effects almost inevitable. I take zero pills. Everything in medicine is available to me. I got friends in every field. I could read any book. I know a lot of specialties better than the specialists know in their own field, okay? Everything is available to me. If there was something good, I would take it. But I'm not aware of anything good, okay? Other than, you know, obviously if you need it, okay? If you're deficient in something, for example. So that's an important key point that few people realize. They think they're aging well. If you're taking pills, you're having a problem, okay? Um, you can't poison your way to optimal health. Now, bad food is also a poison, all right? And it's just more of a random poison, okay? Eating meat, oils, excessive sodium. It just causes progressive daily little bits of damage all over your body, which they add up over the decades. And some bad foods are a little more precise than their side effects. You know, alcohol is directly toxic to your brain and your liver. Caffeine increases your stress response, which is toxic to your brain. Your insulin uh, resistance, it worsens that as well. MSG, MFG are thought uh, harmful to the brain. Anyway, so what's the point? The point is, in comparison, think about good food, okay? If you're eating good food, it builds you up. It improves the function of every cell in your body. Typical American, mo the vast majority of them, they're deficient in dietary fiber. That's what you use to maintain the tight junctions in your colon so you don't get leaky gut and autoimmune disease. Potassium. Potassium is a vasodilator. improves blood flow to everything, okay? And all your... Uh, cell membranes, especially your neuronal cell membranes, your brain, need to have adequate amounts of potassium to function optimally. Magnesium, very similar to potassium in the sense that it's also a vasodilator. It's also needed for membrane function in your brain cells and in other cells. Um, it inhibits the NMDA receptor of glutamate, so it protects you from anxiety. It protects you from um, excitotoxicity, one of the most common causes of neuronal cell death, you know, making you demented. Contains antioxidants, all the other good stuff. So good food builds you up. That's why it's such a wonderful thing. It helps every cell in your body. So that's uh, good to realize this basic idea about what pharmacology can do and can't do.